We are once again live for our second only, our second members only live stream for only our second members only live stream. Um, it seems like it was a good time to do this. The last time uh, we did this was our first time that we did this and it was super late at night. It was like, I think 11 30 PM or 11 15 PM when we started it. That's usually much too late for the European crowd. Um, <clears throat> and I figured it's going to be, uh, it's going to be possibly a few more hours until they let Danny out of custody in LA and, um, and it's a Tuesday afternoon. Anyway, I figured it was just a good time to, to figure out how to, uh, uh, to do this through StreamYard. Do you guys remember the last time that uh, we did this? I said, I didn't know how to do it through, I didn't know how to schedule a members only live chat through StreamYard. And you know, what's funny is it says that we're live. I can see you guys in the live chat. And yet my StreamYard indicator says there are zero people watching, which is clearly not true. <laughs> this is part of the, uh, the learning curve on this. And I'm looking at my, uh, I just switched over to my browser. I'm looking at my own stream and it does not say how many people are watching. Uh, which doesn't really matter. I guess I just wanted some indication that the thing was actually working. But that's okay. I can tell it's working because I can see you guys in the live chat. Um, yeah, well, no, I mean, I see um, some people saying maybe that's because it's members only. Uh, even last time, it did tell me how many people were watching. But that's when I was watching, um, when I was doing the whole thing right from YouTube and I wasn't going through live stream. And, uh, but that's okay. That's all right. Hold on. I'm just going to fiddle with some things uh, behind the scenes here on YouTube for a second. Yeah. I think people, are, I, I think overall um, channel subscribers are starting to understand what the value is of creating the memberships and that it doesn't take anything away from non-members and all content is still going to be viewable by all viewers no matter what. So, um, yeah, what we're going to do is I'm going to keep doing these live Q and A's as members only. And then for the replay, I will always put the settings to everyone. So even someone who doesn't have a membership will still be able to watch the live Q and A's that was members only, but it does improve, uh, having a members only live stream Q and A does improve the Q and A experience itself, not only for me, but also for all of you. And so then it started to occur to me as well. How could we improve the live chat experience for, um, for non Q and A videos? And I started to wonder if maybe it didn't make sense to put the live chat on subscribers only. In the past, I haven't wanted to do something like that because I generally like as much activity going in the live chat as possible. Um, it is my understanding, although I don't necessarily have any evidence for this, it is my understanding that one of the engagement inputs that YouTube recognizes, um, you know, that factors in some way into the, the algorithm and pushing out notifications is, is how engaged is the live chat. And so... I've always thought that the more busy the live chat was, the better. But that's only if you're looking at it from a pure YouTube analytics perspective and not from a user experience perspective, the user being not just viewers, but people who actually participate in the live chat. And so I did tell my, my admins or my moderators to, uh, to sit, to try putting on, um, the live stream comments for, uh, subscribers only for just regular videos. So don't be surprised. I mean, you guys, you guys are already subscribers, so you probably wouldn't even notice the difference, except you might notice that the live chat, um, it certainly would have less spam, you know, because the people who are most likely to spam an account are going to be people who are not in fact subscribers. So, okay. Just a little YouTube info there. I have SPTV tattoo warrior in the back as always helping me star comments. So even though this is members only, and even though, I don't know, there's a chance, there's a chance we only have like a hundred people in here. I truly have no idea how many people in here for the first time. I have no way of knowing how many people are in here, which is crazy, but I am going to say this, put, if you want a question, if you want me to read out a question, please put all caps question in the beginning of your thing. Um, if, if you simply have a comment, but you would like me to read it out, 
please begin to comment with comment. Sometimes I'll see something that is, oh Jesus, what did I just do? Are you, did it, did it really just do that? <laughs> that's, that's wild. Sometimes I'll see a question in the live chat and I bring it up and it turns out it wasn't even for me or, or it was for like, someone was just asking a question of someone else in the live chat and it's just always a little unnecessary so barb is back there starring things so i'll tell you what since barb is starring things i'm actually not going to scroll through the entire chat like i did last time so let me let me just say hi to some of the first people who are in here melody hedrick from portland oregon said oh how cool and uh, Lori plays one of my moderators, says, hey, 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 everyone, and hello, all the moderators. Do you guys know, for these members-only live chats, for the moderators who are not channel members, YouTube won't even let them in? That's pretty silly. You think that's pretty silly. Does YouTube think some channel is going to try to cheat the system by just, like, signing up thousands of people as moderators <laughs> or something? Anyhow. So I guess Lori is in here. So Lori is clearly a channel member as is SPTV Tattoo Warrior. <laughs> Popsicle People said, yay, I made it. Cheshire Cat, how are you? Moon Glow, Rio for Life. Hello from Hibbing, Minnesota. Hello. <clears throat> On the happy healing train. A lot happening now. Protesters are at the hearing for La Poubelle's license. Yeah, so my understanding is that the um, the La Poubelle license hearing starts at like 4.30 Pacific. So maybe people are getting there early, but I don't think it starts for another hour, which is another reason why I was like, you know what, this is a good time just to do a, a, a live Q&A and do it early enough that the Europeans can join. And I did see someone in the chat from Norway. Sharona, so many things to keep up with today. I'm glad I realized this was happening. Well, Sharona, you must have got a notification, thank goodness, because uh, I didn't... Um, make any announcement that I was going to be doing this. So at least some notifications are going out. Ev Barney, hello. Ren Listens, hello. Karaoke Jen is in the chat. Lumen. Armin, hello. Tammy Moore. And there we go. Hi from Norway. It's me, Anna. Hello in Norway. My pearls. More content. Yes, and I wanted to get as much done today early as possible because I actually have two new um, uh, sub um, sponsor integrations to do. I have a new sponsor. And you know what? Oh, is it over there? Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? This isn't my official plug for the new sponsor, but let me see if I can find them because I kind of like talking about these things a lot. Indeed. Check this out, guys. Raycon earbuds. Raycon wireless earbuds. Newest sponsor of SP TV. And it's, if any of you guys are interested at all. By the way, when a sponsor like Raycon sponsors the channel, uh, I do not get paid for every person who buys one of these things. They just pay me a flat fee to do an ad for them. And then if they're happy with how many people buy it, then they'll pay me to do another ad. But they did give me a special uh, a special little link there, buyraycon.com forward slash SPTV. If you guys watch a lot of YouTube channels, you will see the biggest YouTubers on the platform um, are sponsored by Raycon earbuds. So uh, I was absolutely thrilled that they wanted to jump on and become a sponsor. So I've got to record a new integration for Raycon and I've got to record a new integration for Ridge Wallet. And so when we finish this, this will be my last thing for the evening because then uh, those things take me a little bit of time. I am a tinkerer. And when I pre-record things and I sit down and I edit things, I will edit and edit and edit and edit. And that's what happens when I do these integrations. Even though they're only like 60 seconds long, I'll spend hours doing them. I'm just silly that way. Okay, let's see. Oh, Lori can see there's 61 people in the chat, but that was about eight minutes ago. Wow. How cool is it just to do a private Q&A with 60 people? That's awesome. Okay, so let me, I'm going to start going through the ones that Barb has starred here for me. Kimmy Steele says, do you know anything about the org in Battle Creek, Michigan? I learned recently that Scientology purchased the Kellogg Mansion about 10-ish years ago. So when I was training at Flag in Clearwater, Florida, 
uh, in the late nineties from as a staff member from the Philadelphia org, there was people there from the battle Creek mission. If I recall correct, Jeff Breedlove was from the battle Creek mission. Um, there was three or four, um, I'm sorry, not, not mission org battle Creek, Michigan org. Um, there was three or four people there. Michigan, the orgs in Michigan have always been small, uh, not very successful orgs. Uh, that's going to be even more true today than it was, um, back then. So other than that, I just don't know very much about it. Uh, yeah. If they purchased the Kellogg mansion, like I wonder, is it even renovated? Let me, I'm, I'm going to look it up here. Have they even, has the Battle Creek org opened up as an ideal org? So Battle Creek, Michigan, Scientology. Church of Scientology of Battle Creek, all are welcome. It looks like they're at 151 North Avenue, Battle Creek, Michigan. I'm guessing that disgusting little building that I'm looking at is not the Kellogg Mansion. All right, so let me now Google where the Kellogg Mansion is. The Kellogg Mansion, located at 1 Monroe Street in Battle Creek, Michigan. Wow. That is, well, okay, that's not that spectacular. Let's take another photo of it. Huh. It's not what I think of when I think of mansion. Oh, wait, there's another view of it. Okay, that's a little more mansion-like. Yeah, I can tell you all the Scientologists that have ever existed in Battle Creek, Michigan could probably fit into the swimming pool of the Kellogg Mansion and that they have a 0.00% chance of raising the millions and millions of dollars that it will take to renovate that building. It's one of those buildings, eventually uh, big fundraisers or, you know, big donors like, um, what's the guy with the big head? <laughs> what is the name of that dude with a giant head who's probably by now, not that there's anything wrong with that, you guys, uh, probably been not donated close to $50 million. Why am I, uh, Tom Cummins, uh, an org like Battle Creek, Michigan, is one of those orgs that eventually a big donor like Tom Cummins will run out of orgs to donate to. And then like Battle Creek will be like the last one on the list. And it'll be like uh, one of the few left that the big donors who just print money in their businesses have to support. Um, and, and you might go, well, that's one of the orgs eventually David Miscavige will have to swoop in and spend some of Scientology's reserves to fix it up. And you go, yes, that's one opportunity. That's one possibility, except David Miscavige likes these little failing orgs like Battle Creek because it, it 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 gives an excuse for the ideal org fundraising program to not yet be done. It gives an excuse for Miscavige to chill, still try to soak people for money. If the whole project was done, he wouldn't have anything. Uh, he'd have to come up with something new to soak people uh, for money. So that's all I know about Battle Creek, Michigan. Thank you, Kimmy Steele. Sierra wins. Yay, I don't have to compete with 3,000 people. Exactly. It's a much better Q&A experience. Ren listens. Thank you for moving the YouTube plaque. Yeah, guys, it was driving me crazy as well. <laughs> and so actually what I wanted to do was put up like a little survey as to whether you think it's crooked or straight or whether it needs to be further over or not. But but I, I think it's pretty good. I, th I actually did it on my first shot. See, to me, it looks a little crooked. It looks like the side that's closest to the wall needs to come up a little bit. But it's funny, when you actually when I actually go closer to the wall, it doesn't look that way anymore. Anyway, it's probably because like the whole wall itself is slightly crooked. Anyway, nothing I can do about that. Karen McCourt says, working. Mine always works, though. Okay, that's great, Karen. Uh, let's see. Sierra wins. It's just nice to be noticed after years of watching, but can't do super chats. Bingo. That's exactly once it dawned on me that there was a legitimate reason to turn on memberships that actually benefited the viewer and not just the creator. I was like, I get it. I get it now. I get it now. Um, and also, you know, these new, these new initiatives that, that YouTube rolls out, for whatever reason, like it's very clear that YouTube wants channels to turn on memberships. Uh, you know, it just occurred to me, maybe that's because YouTube, maybe YouTube's a little pissed off that platforms like Patreon 
maybe YouTube feels like companies like Patreon are taking like revenue dollars out of YouTube's pocket and they're like, no, thank you, sir. We'll put some of that revenue back into our own pocket. But it's very clear that um, those things YouTube wants channels to do uh, without making it super, super obvious why. Also shorts, YouTube shorts. You guys, if you on my channel, I, uh, I, when I say shorts, I mean like the little 60 second, 60, nine by 16 profile things. Um, there was a while where I was putting those up on my channel. I haven't in a long time. YouTube really, really, really wants creators to do shorts. And it seems to somehow reward channels that are doing shorts. And um, who knows, maybe I'll start doing it again. Uh, thank you, Sarah Wins, for the comment. Okay, Claire says, what sort of things did you talk to Andrew Gold about? Mostly Scientology. Um, so the interview that I did with Andrew was actually for his channel. And... Um, uh, and Andrew's got two channels. He's got the, what is it? Um, On the Edge with Andrew Gold, which is mostly uh, Scientology, cults, and the royal family. And then he's got his Heretics channel, which is really more about, um, I'm just going to kind of casually call it culture war stuff. And Andrew wanted to interview me for his Heretics channel. And I said, oh, I see. You're trying to get me canceled. <laughs> And I said, well, challenge accepted. You can try to get me canceled and I'll do my best not to get canceled. So um, we talked about some culture war uh, issues and, and then a bunch of Scientology stuff, some Aftermath Foundation stuff, as you can imagine. Um, and it was one of the most fun conversations I've had since being on YouTube or, or on YouTube. And it was an hour and 20 minutes long. I imagine the edit will be about an hour and 20 minutes long. And, uh, oh, actually, he texted me today. I think he said it'll be up in 10 days. Is that what he said? Let me, let me check here. Um, <laughs> 10 days or so. That's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you for the question, Kler. Ninpolite, subscriber only is good. Uh, could weed out some trolls and also helps to slow down the chat. Indeed. I mean, when there's only 60 people in here, no, no, no real need to slow it down, but, but, um, true. Nonetheless, thank you. Nin polite fluffer squirrel UK, just to let everyone know a new channel at Chi Chicana is streaming in the Los Angeles hearing is streaming in the LA hearing. Very cool. Excellent. So many channels popping up. It's incredible. All right. Let's see. <laughs> SPTV Tattoo Warrior says, and don't you say I'm starring too many questions because you answered 56 comments yesterday. I will never accuse you, Barb, of starring too many questions or comments ever again. Hashtag workplace violence. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Simply says T, simply says T. Question from the UK. Do you have an update on the new foundation? I do, you guys. I absolutely do. Just today. Um, so uh, that uh, just today, the foundation is officially a legal entity. The fact that it took this long to make this happen is, is unbelievable. It has to do with uh, a slowdown and a backup in the processing time of applications for the state of Florida. It also has to do with the fact that I had to do the application hard copy and snail mail instead of online because uh, the online application limits the amount of directors, board members, that you can include in your application. It caps it at like eight. And uh, we were applying with 10 board members. And so for that reason, I had to print it out, fill it out by hand, and do it by snail mail. And for a professional procrastinator, you can imagine that already added some additional time to it. But um, but the delay was not really mostly on my end. Um, you, you know, when you send in your application, you have to send in a, a check with the application. That check cleared two months ago. And then it was only two weeks ago that I found out because I, I check the secretary of state website, you know, every day to check on the status of this thing. Two weeks ago, I found out that there was some kind of reject. So it said the new foundation was active, but then when you click through on it, it says that there's a reject. So I called and I said, okay, we're two months into this and I'm just finding out there's a reject. Like, 
am I going to have to get back in the queue and wait another 60 days once I fix the reject? And by the way, I haven't received anything. And they said, well, the letter, the letter says what the reject is. I'm like, can you tell me? And it was like one miss. It was like a missing signature on a page. And I was like, okay, well, am I going to get, am I going to get, get the letter? And they said, yeah, yeah, it's been sent out. That was too, because I figured, okay, I'll just be patient and, and wait. And, and, and they said, the letter should have, you know, a person's name and phone number, and you shouldn't have to get back into the queue. Anyway, so I was like, okay, I'll just be a, a patient, a patient little Aaron, which is not my specialty. And anyway, two weeks later today, I still haven't received the letter. So I called them. I'm like, no, no, no. I've got to get on the phone with whoever it is who sent the letter. Long story short, I got on the phone. Um, she agreed. She told me exactly what needed to be done. She said, look, you don't actually have to wait to receive the letter. Just print off this one page, sign the page, take a picture, turn it into a PDF, email it to me, and I will finalize this application. Uh, so I did that. She called me back 30 minutes later. She said, done. Um, application received, accepted, approved. It's official. Um, now, so... I still don't want to announce the name. I still don't want to announce the name. I still don't, I don't want to announce the name until the website's ready, uh, the bank account's ready, and that's when I should announce the name. Um, I don't even want to announce the directors, even though technically you can find them online. I want it to kind of all be one big surprise. So um, uh, that's the good news, guys. I've been sitting here in limbo the whole time. Now you might go, okay, but wait, but that's just the state thing. You still got to do the IRS thing. Yes, but here's the thing. When the IRS um, issues a, determina a determination letter of tax exempt status on an organization, um, whenever it's issued during the year, it's issued retroactively to January 1st of the year. That's what happened with the Aftermath Foundation. Luis Garcia himself personally is the one who submitted all of the paperwork uh, to the state of Texas and to the IRS. It wasn't even the lawyer. It was actually Luis Garcia. And I, I went back through all the paperwork and I looked at the date of the application, the date of the incorporation, the date of the determination letter, and the date of the IRS exemption, of the, the effective date. And that's how I, how I um, verified all that knowledge. So um, now that I have the entity approved, just takes five minutes to go onto the website and get an FEIN number, then you can go open the bank account. Um, and then technically speaking, we can start, um, raising funds, depositing them into the bank and, um, uh, and that, that the raising of those funds would just be doing videos, uh, telling people where they can send the check or PayPal or Venmo or whatever. You guys know that what I really, really want to do is to be able to do what I did in the last, you know, six, eight months with the Aftermath Foundation is to do the live YouTube fundraisers where all you have to do is click the donate button right on YouTube and YouTube pays all of the processing fees. The delay on that is going to be you can't do that until after the IRS determin determination letter arrives because you have to take your IRS determination letter and you need that to send the application into YouTube to get your new nonprofit accepted on the list of nonprofits where you can do those live stream fundraisers. So we can start, I mean, really any day now, like literally today, I should have taken the 30 minutes to get the FEIN number. And then um, tomorrow, uh, honestly, tomorrow I could probably have the bank account open. Technically, and, and then honestly, I know that the website's almost open. I, the website's almost ready. The only reason the website isn't ready is because I still thought it was going to take weeks for me to get this paperwork sorted out with the state of Florida. Um, and I'm not the one doing the website, but, um, it, it looks fantastic right now. So we can start raising money. We can even start dispersing money, um, while the IRS application is happening, <clears throat> you know, dispersing money to applicants and we can hopefully, I don't know how I, I'm told it really shouldn't take more than four to eight weeks for the IRS approval to come. And then we'll be able to be rocking and rolling on live, uh, YouTube, live stream, SPTZ, uh, SPTV fundraisers every now and then. And uh, finally, because in my personal opinion, guys, one of the reasons there is still so much uproar about people being denied by the Aftermath Foundation or people feeling that um, current board members are not acting appropriately is because there just isn't something else to pour energy and attention into. 
And I do believe that once there is, a lot of those rough waters should calm down. That's my prediction. Uh, that's my hope. And uh, so, yeah, that's all a bunch of good news. Thank you for the question. Okay, let's see. Ann Bell says, question, how do creators find their moderators? Are the moderators members of the community or is it StreamYard or how? They do a great job, by the way. And thank you to them. What a great question. This is a really, really simple answer. If you are doing a YouTube live stream, you can you can literally pick anybody to be your moderator. So, um, I, I okay, so I'll just answer for myself. For a long time, I didn't use moderators. I didn't understand what they were for because I, even as a YouTube uh, content consumer, I don't, I, until the whole protesting thing started happening, I've never participated in someone's live chat. The channels that I watch tend not to be channels that live stream either. So I just never had any experience in live streams. It didn't occur to me that moderators were a thing or what they were used for. Okay. So once I started doing live streams, people in the live stream chat, in the live chat, like, hey, I, I'd like to be a moderator. I, I, I'll be a moderator if you want me to be a moderator. All you got to do as a YouTuber is put your mouse cursor over the person that you want to make a moderator and you right click and you say, make them a moderator. <laughs> it is that easy. If you see someone moderating for a bunch of different channels, there's no special rhyme or reason for that other than um, the person doing the moderating uh, really wanted to do it. And uh, the person doing the channel is like, hey, uh, you're a known entity. You're known, you know, like uh, you're not a, a perfect stranger, uh, you know, like, cause if someone sees a moderator on my channel, they might go, oh yeah, I, I know SPTV tattoo warrior. She knows what she's doing. She knows what's up. She knows how to keep the trolls underneath the bridge. And, uh, so, um, there's no special reason why you see moderators on different channels. Um, I, it actually might make more sense for channels to only use moderators that only moderate on their channel personally, but there's no rhyme or reason to it. And it, it doesn't really matter. And, uh, yeah, YouTube's got nothing to do with it. StreamYard's got nothing to do with it. Um, you can make someone a moderator, unmake someone a moderator just with a click of a button. That's how it works. Thank you for the question, Ann Bell. Olga says, great job on setting up your in-person space. I've always wanted to create a YouTube channel to speak on co-parenting and blended families. You inspire me to just do it. Thank you, A.A. Ron. That is awesome. Yeah, that is really cool. It's the really coolest thing. The coolest thing about YouTube is that anybody really can uh, do it. It just doesn't take much to get started. And you learn, uh, you learn all the mistakes by making them. None of the mistakes are fatal. Uh, I like to say the internet has no memory. You can screw up on your channel today. It's a brand new day tomorrow. Nobody cares. Nobody remembers. <laughs> um, the risk is, uh, is very low and, um, and the fun and the satisfaction potential is very high. So yes, Olga, just do it. That is my advice. Okay, what does Lady Pamela have to say here? Eyes2C33 has less than 200 subscribers. I think she is awesome. And we could maybe get her more. All right, Lady Pamela, I don't know what that channel is. Is that a Scientology channel? Is that just a channel you like on YouTube? I've got no idea. But if anybody wants to check out that channel, go ahead and check it out. Thank you very much. Shagward question, what is Sea Org food like? Very good question. The answer to this question differs from Sea Org base to Sea Org base. Um, I would guess East US probably has the, the Sea Org base in East US in New York probably has the worst food uh, of the United States, Sea Org bases. I would guess that Flag in Clearwater, Florida probably has the best food of all the Sea Org bases. When you say what it's like, um, oh, Celebrity Center International in LA also has one of the best foods for Sea Org bases. Uh, for breakfast, you're looking at a lot of eggs, a lot of toast. Um, for lunch and dinner, you're looking at a lot of uh, chicken, a lot of rice, a lot of beans. Um, here's the thing. My bar for eating food is quite low. Um, I am easily pleased with food. <laughs> You'll never hear me complain about the food we ate in the Sea Org. I ate a lot of it. I ate frequently. Um, I never went hungry and I never missed a meal. <laughs> um, the food at on L. Ron Hubbard Way wasn't great, but it was perfectly acceptable to me. The food at Flag was quite good. Um, I only had a few meals at the Celebrity Center, but those guys over there are spoiled. Uh, I 
I shiver when I think of what they must be eating in Toronto at the um, Continental Management Org there in Toronto or in East U.S. I mean, East U.S., the Continental Management Office in New York City is like one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen. Um, I'm guessing that the, the Sea Org Basin, South Africa, probably has pretty good food because of the whole Kiliami Castle thing going on. That's just my guess. I don't really have any knowledge about the U.K., um, there's a Sea Org base in Copenhagen, Denmark, that I have to imagine has to be about average. Um, and there is a Sea Org base in Sydney, Australia. I've got no input on their food at all. Someone is saying that the La Poubelle hearing starts uh, at 4 p.m. Pacific. I got to tell you, I'm not really personally invested in the La Poubelle hearing. So I'm not, I'm not going to be ending this live stream just for that. And even if it starts at four, some, I heard Jessica say it doesn't really start until 4.30. So um, just keep that in mind. That might be a possibility. That's Abuela. Abuela, SP supporter says, hearing starts at 4 p.m. Pacific. Don't want you to miss it. Um, so thank you for that. And anyone who wants to watch that can watch that as well. Okay, let's see here. Jenny Wong, who does the LAPD report to? With all the videos showing how corrupt they are, it's mind-boggling to me how they're getting away with it. Are internal affairs corrupt as well? Much love from Brisbane, Australia. Jenny Wong, did you know that my little youngest daughter, the one at the end of all my videos, her name is Brisbane, and she was named after Brisbane, Australia. So there you go, fun facts. So I don't know the uh, civic structure in Los Angeles. I don't necessarily want to assume it's the same as Clearwater, Florida. So all I'm going to do is answer the question as it would apply to Clearwater, Florida. In Clearwater, Florida, and I know it's different, guys, because Clearwater, Florida, we have what's called a council manager form of government as opposed to a strong mayor form of government. Uh, and, and these different forms of governments have different um, phrases or words that describe them. So like the mayor of Clearwater, Florida does not run the city. The mayor of Clearwater, Florida is somewhat of a ceremonial position, is one of five council members. And uh, the, you know, there's certain extra, certain rights and privileges afforded to that position that are different than the city council. But generally speaking, uh, uh, Clearwater basically has a five member city council. Uh, the only two people the city council can hire or fire are the city manager and the city attorney. So the city council is more like the board of directors of the city and the city manager is like the CEO. The city manager runs day-to-day -day operations, handles all hiring and firing. The city manager is accountable to the city council and the chief of police answers to the city manager. Um, that is how it works in Clearwater, Florida. Does it work the same way in LA? I cannot say, but I do believe that the mayor of Los Angeles is a strong mayor, meaning the city is not run by a city manager to my understanding, but I could be totally wrong. So anyway, I don't know if that's helpful at all. And I also don't know, like, I don't, how, like who runs internal affairs for a police department? How in the world is it possible for internal affairs and the person who runs internal affairs to not have some sort of inherent conflict with the rest of, uh oh, Barb, you're starring some stuff, to have some sort of internal conflict with um, the uh, uh, conflict of interest with the, with the rest of the department. I just don't know. Does internal affairs answer to the chief of police? How could, the, how could internal affairs ever investigate the chief of police if they answer to the chief of police? And if they don't answer to the chief of police, then who do they answer to? Who watches the watchers is always the big question. I just don't know how it works in the LAPD. Thank you for the question, though, Jenny. I really appreciate it. Um, okay, Karaoke Jen says, funny story. My cat woke me up making biscuits in my hair. I yelled at him. You done messed up, A.A. Ron. His name is Loki. My husband thinks I watch too much SPTV. And I say, I don't watch enough. Yes, I agree. <laughs> that is a funny story. I've been wanting to edit new versions of the intro to my channel. And um, just to break up the monotony a little bit of the intro. I mean, I presently use like two different intros, but that whole segment could be edited up so many different ways. And um, I don't know, you, you know how like, okay, where I'm going with this is, I'm becoming more and more aware of the comments on the channels that are getting really tired of the intro. And it's not like these are new comments. People have been making these comments for years. 
And I've always said nothing could ever make me change the intro because it's hilarious. And because if you thought it was hilarious the first time you saw it, the other people who are seeing my channel for the first time every day will also think it's hilarious. Why would I change it now? Why change what's working? For some reason, I'm just starting to become even more either aware of or sensitive to the comments complaining about the intro. And it's been bugging me for the last few days. So let me know in the comments section here, do you guys think I should keep the key and peel intro? Do you guys think I should just do my videos with no intro at all? Um, or do you think I should change it up with a different intro? Let me know what you guys think. And anyone watching on the replay, let me know what you think to that in the comments down below. All right, Jennifer Fisher says, how far do you think Scientology will take this fight? Do they have any limits to their fight? Jennifer, I don't think they have any limits to their fight. They have all the human capital they need in terms of man hours, weekly man hours that they could expend on this. <laughs> the Sea Org member to public Scientology ratio keeps getting higher and higher and higher. There's just Sea Org members that just honestly don't have enough to do because there aren't enough Scientologists in the world to keep them busy. Um, and also Scientology has all of this tax exempt money just accumulating interest in its accounts and there's nothing preventing them from just constantly spending that money on hiring more private investigators who hire more goons and hiring more private security. So I think this um, battle between Scientology and the protesters will continue to escalate. And um, let's just, I just say, thank God the protesters have, have William Goode there as an example of how to stand up to this stuff and how to conduct yourself appropriately uh, to minimize your risk and um, maximize the public support. And I think all the protesters have uh, an amazing example in, in William Goode that will help steer them right. Thank you for the question, Jennifer. Really appreciate it. Okay, Claire, who would be your dream interview in your new studio space? You know what? Because Natalie Webster is such an amazing talker, I feel like just my first answer is Natalie Webster. She was she was made to speak into a microphone. Um, but you know, I'll tell you what, one of the, um, my friend Clearwater George, you guys know him, uh, Clearwater George, surrounded by Scientology. Um, he and I uh, have really had this, this plan we've been talking about for a while to get local Clearwater folks who have never been in Scientology but have grown up around Scientology uh, to come in and tell some stories from the, you know, the, the golden days of when Scientology first came in and took over. And that, you know, a lot of these folks are a little up, up there in years in age and that it would be really fun to have a space where a lot of these locals, cause I'm right, I'm right here in the thick of it in Clearwater can just uh, drop on by and sit down and have a little chat about that time. They were called in the Fort Harrison to fix the telephone and, L. Ron Hubbard's office, even though L. Ron Hubbard was dead and no one understood why the phone in his office needed to be fixed. <laughs> Things like that. So having locals being able to, to drop in and do chats is also part of the dream. Thank you, Claire, for the question. Tammy Moore, question, what do you know about the Fresno mission? Is it active? Oh boy, I know nothing about the Fresno mission. I couldn't have even told you that there was a mission in Fresno. Missions open and close in Scientology all the time. Um, the only way it's active is to knock on the door. Just because it's there doesn't even mean it's active. Just because, you know, it could be like, so, some missions are open like three hours a week. <laughs> some missions are only open when there's someone who wants to come in and take a course. Uh, you just never know what those missions, Tammy. Thank you for the question. Lunar35 says, I've been researching the Battle Creek Org too. They have not renovated the Hart Hotel yet, just sitting on it. Oh, is the Hart Hotel what they call the old Kellogg Mansion? Interesting. Uh, let's see. What is this? SPIT Clearwater. Hey, boss, I think some of us are going to head out for the occasion tomorrow. Think you'll have time to join? I just might have time to join tomorrow. Wait, what is the occasion? Oh, March 13th? L. Ron Hubbard's birthday? You know what? Every time I commit to doing something in advance, I end up regretting it. But I'm going to commit to this tomorrow. Let's, let's do it. I mean, how... What could possibly happen to keep me from doing this tomorrow? I don't know. But let's do it. It's March 13th. It's the old man's birthday. Let's go out and ask some Scientologists what they think about Danny Masterson or some other thing. Let's do it. Oh, but uh, Clearwater George is going to go out of town, isn't he? That's okay. We'll have to go out there without him. Let's do it. 
All right, let's see. Ali's mom says, what has happened to Chris without a Hellcat? Haven't seen him for days. Is he still on YouTube? Do you know? Oh, Hellcat uh, has never um, uh, been an, an everyday on, on YouTube uh, channel. Um, yeah, that's all. If, if, he, if he goes dark for like three or four or five days, that's not actually unusual. So no, there's nothing, there's nothing um, uh, weird or concerning going on with Hellcat. Just, uh, he'll, just give him a couple of days. He'll be back. I'm sure about it. All right, let's see. What is this? Uh-oh, what is this? Comment, off topic, but I see you reaching 1 million subscribers with the recent announcement of your new interview space, and I'm here for it. Well, guys, you know what? Um, well, first of all, thank you. That would be amazing. Um, my subscriber growth has actually significantly slowed the last couple of weeks. So uh, I don't know. At this rate, I'll reach a million in like, you know, the turn of the millennia. But um you know, I, I just, I, I, it'll be really interesting to see what the reaction is, um, YouTube engagement wise, analytics wise, um, to the interviews. And, um, I'm going to have to pick up some editing skills because I've never done, I've done video editing as far as just content editing. I haven't done video editing as far as merging camera shots and enhancing the image and the saturation and the color, whatever's, um, and the, and the audio and the multiple audio tracks. But, uh, it is something I'm very excited about learning. I've got a very strong incentive to learn it and get good at it and get fast at it. Um, yeah. Hey, I hope I reach a million subs, even if it takes 10 years. That would be a nice accomplishment. Thank you, Bob Blacksheep. Okay, Freedom from Religion says, hello from Chicago O'Hare. I need to edit my Hawaii video so you can see the interviews. I did get a longtime staff member of 50 years to talk. I also interviewed a 17 year old seeker. Oh, that sounds really interesting. I cannot wait to see it. Uh, thank you. Freedom from religion. Janice Haldeman question thoughts on Grant Cardone leaving New York to evade law investigation into his illegal practices. Pretty much everything. Grant Cardone is just a publicity stunt. And honestly, I thought the reason he was leaving New York is because of, um, in protest of, uh, the Donald Trump lawsuits or something like that. Wasn't that what it is? I don't know that you know, Grant Cardone is being investigated in New York, but either way, it's just a publicity stunt. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to be doing a Grant Cardone video tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. Ooh, cat ACDC fan. Have you heard of the wolf in squirrel's clothing? His handle is at hard met LA. Out of Berlin, he's been doing protesting there. He follows the squirrel protesters too. That must have been one of the emails that I saw come through this morning about a protester in Berlin. I uh, haven't seen the channel yet, but I look forward to seeing it. Thank you, Cat ACDC fan. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Irrelevant Panda. Question, whatever happened with the trafficking lawsuit from the Australian Sea Org members? Uh, could you perhaps do a video on any updates on the various cases now that there is a lot of energy? Uh, so the uh, that lawsuit, still pending. That was the lawsuit where originally it was ordered into arbitration. And then the um, plaintiff's legal teams asked the judge to, I'm going to forget the name of this special type of appeal. Um, basically, the plaintiff's lawyers asked the judge for permission to appeal his decision to the higher court without making the plaintiffs go through the internal arbitration process and finish that process before being allowed to make the appeal. And the judge said, yes, I will grant you that request because you're right. My decision is a decision that could easily be interpreted otherwise by or overturned by a higher court. And um, an, interlocu an interlocutory appeal, I think they requested an interlocutory appeal and their request was granted. And I think we are still waiting to hear if the higher court accepts, uh, accepts to hear the appeal or they might have already accepted to hear the appeal and we're waiting for that hearing to occur. I don't remember where it's at in either that step one or step two. Could you perhaps do a video on any updates on the various cases? The answer is yes. There simply have not been a lot of like really like video worthy updates, but the answer is yes. Like that is the, 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 the lawsuits and the cases are things I very much plan on covering as closely as possible. So thank you for that. Uh, Deanna Ross, question, what is the latest with Mark Bunker's campaign? Well, I'm glad um, uh, you asked because I will say today is the very, very, very last day that it is um, legal 
or possible to accept donations to Mark Bunker's campaign, markbunker2024.com. If you want to donate, today's the last day. Um, anyone in the U.S. should be able to, to donate. Um, and the update is that the elections are in seven days. So, you know, this is sort of crunch time for all of the candidates to get out the last of their scheduled mailers. Um, pretty much all the yard signs that are going to be out are already out. Um, knock on as many doors as possible. Shake as many hands as possible. Mail-in voting has already been happening for like a month. But the actual in-person voting uh, happens in seven days. Fingers crossed, guys. Zenu willing. Mark Bunker will be a city council member for four more years. And then after that, if, if Mark Bunker wins the election in a week, in four more years, we can expect Mark Bunker to run for mayor of Clearwater. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, all right, let's see. Oh, Rona Cooley says, you need chat stickers for members. Guys, this is an open call for all of you people who love designing things in Canva. Is it Canva or Canvas? I don't know, you guys. Um, Marilyn Honig sent me a little uh, per some pearls that she designed. Uh, I have to figure out how to upload these things to YouTube, guys. I'm figuring this out as I go. Uh, anyone who wants to design little chat stickers for me to upload for the members, please do so. I'll, I mean, I'll use, I'll use anything you guys send me. <laughs> I mean, I think you guys are the ones who get to choose which ones you want, right? See, this is the problem. The problem is I do, I'm not active in other channels, live streams other than the streaming protesters. So I, I don't have personal like, um, user interface experience on how all these little gadgets and gizmos and stickers and stuff work. So I'm a little out of my depth. But I know that when YouTube is advising you on how to set up these memberships, YouTube themselves seem to really want you to use all these cute little stickers and everything. So you guys design me all the cute little stickers and gizmos and gadgets that you want. Send them to me, and I will figure out how to upload them. Thank you, Rona. Ooh, Becky Williamson. I've been hearing a lot about this thing here. Netflix documentary called The Program. Leah Remini is on for a couple of seconds talking to Joe Rogan about Scientology. So I, I've heard about this thing, the program, and a lot of people have suggested that I watch it. And I still have no idea what it's about, but I think it's about, is it about a cult that was called the program? Or is it about many cults? I'm not sure, but it comes highly recommended. I don't even watch a lot of Netflix these days. It used to be like my main jam. Now my main jam is YouTube. So, um, but uh, yeah, I hope to be able to get around and watch this thing eventually. Thank you for the comment, Becky. Lunar 35, uh, Aaron, I'm also researching a Narconon Center in Battle Creek. Have you heard of Per Wickstrom? I have heard of Per Wickstrom. Uh, I happen to know a good deal about Per Wickstrom. And um, yeah, I think I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay, let's see here. Hmm. Jen, a question for questions. Looking for effective questions to ask council members at the Hollywood Resident Town Hall. Thanks. Um, Jen, thank you for the question of questions. I, I, I just sort of ha have a pat answer here because I think, I think this particular question will always be helpful. And it would just be, what is your position and, and would you support? What is your position on and would you support holding congressional hearings into Scientology's tax-exempt status. The reason I like the, that particular question and how it's worded is that you're not even asking them to call for a hearing. Um, you're not asking them to participate in a hearing. You're asking them if they would support holding congressional hearings. Would they support Congress holding hearings into Scientology's tax-exempt status? That's a fair question that anyone can answer, even if you're asking them about something that's completely outside of their control, at least professionally speaking, like uh, a council member. It's not within their control to call for um, uh, a, a congressional hearing into Scientology's tax exam status. Now, technically, it's, it's within everyone's control, but you guys know what I mean. Uh, I, mean, I, mean I mean, they're not in Congress, but technically, it's... And within everyone's control to demand congressional hearings into Scientology's tax exempt status. And so therefore, any elected official, incumbent or challenger, 
uh, I think it's fair to ask them, is this something that you would support? Because if not, then perhaps that person needs to be better educated on the human trafficking cult that is Scientology. Thank you, Jen. Uh-oh, Bev's playlist says, I became a member yesterday, but did not get a shout out. You have my support anyway. Well, Bev's playlist, this is your shout out now. Thank you for becoming a member. And uh, thank you for jumping in on the members only live stream. Glad to have you here. Okay, Lauren Quigley. Have you heard of anyone in Scientology suffering sleep paralysis? If so, what were the experiences they had? And how was it explained, if at all? I'm not sure that I know what sleep paralysis is. Is it when you wake up and you're having a nightmare and you can't move? Because if so, I've had that as a child. And everything in Scientology is explained away by engrams and overts and evil purposes and postulates. Everything, 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 everything. An engram is a moment of pain and unconsciousness that L. Ron Hubbard says is recorded in the reactive mind uh, the subconscious, but always conscious, uh, mind. And, um, engrams are the reason for all bad things. Now, once you no longer have your reactive mind, cause your reactive mind is composed of your engrams, uh, the engrams and the reactive minds of your body thetans are then the source of all your bad things. And then there's another thing, which is that L. Ron Hubbard says that as a spirit, as a thetan, you can just make postulates, which is like directed thought. Um, you can just make postulates and uh, about and 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 you can postulate evil purposes, and that these things sort of um, act independently of engrams and the reactive mind, and can also be the cause of all the bad things that happen to you. So, yes, that's the best answer I got for you, Lauren Quigley. Thank you for the question. Um, okay, zero zero. Das Hero, zero, zero, Das Hero. Since someone else mentioned it, the grand jury investigation into CSA going on in Pennsylvania is ongoing. Someone did mention it, and I think I skipped over it because I didn't exactly know what relevance it had, but now I see the relevance that it has. I'll have to get more information on that. Uh, our Armin says, I feel so special being part of this only members group and more chance that my message will be read. I can't super chat. So this is great. I'm in the UK and I'm happy to catch this live. Thank you for all you do. Well, thank you very much, Armin. Um, uh, what you mentioned here is exactly the reason why um, memberships, why you turned on memberships in the first place. So uh, I'm glad that um, I'm glad that it's serving you well. Thank you for joining and Thank you for being in, the, in here with us. Sam says, this is so exciting. I'm making a Scientology informational brochure to appeal to the public and current Scientologists. And I've been waiting for the new nonprofit to put on it so that I didn't have to print it with the Aftermath Foundation. There you go. Uh, Sam, go ahead and shoot me an email. I will try to see it and I will try to give you some more information. Thank you very much. Big Z 1979, are you going to launch a new channel for the new foundation or will all of your separate channels be linked up to it? Oh, definitely not creating a new channel for the foundation. Well, actually, now that I say that, it actually isn't a terrible idea. Um, but you see, one of the reasons why I'm inclined not to is because like the foundation is all of its members. The foundation is all of its supporters. I sort of have like a negative inclination to create its own thing on YouTube, but it's not a terrible idea. But now that I say that, see, here's the thing. We're not going to be doing documentaries of the people that we help. It's like, it, uh, it's a nice little gimmick and it raises money, but it doesn't raise more money than was spent making the damn thing in the first place. Um, and it's sort of like a big rah, rah, look at us, look at all the good work that we're doing. Um, I, I, it was only done because Mark and Claire wanted to do it. Um, I don't think it's necessary. It's a lot of effort that doesn't need to be spent. It's money that doesn't need to be spent. It's logistics that don't need, that people don't need to, to, to bother with. Um, and I have no plans to do that. Uh, and so that's another reason why I just don't know that there needs to be a dedicated YouTube channel for the foundation, but, but we'll see. Maybe there's some other reason that we'll think of why it 
why creating a separate channel makes sense. But as of right now, my answer would be most likely none. Okay, Lydia von Stretchclaw, can we have a launch party for the new foundation? I will do something. I, I don't know how we would do the party, um, but uh, we'll do something. We will do something. We'll figure it out. Good to see you, Lydia von Stretchclaw. Okay, Freedom From Religion says, in my humble opinion, the best question to ask your member of Congress, et cetera, is why the IRS is not in compliance with the Supreme Court's 1989 Martinez versus IRS commissioner. Uh-oh, this was question one of two, and I don't see the second one. But yeah, Freedom From Religion is talking about a Supreme Court decision that ruled donations to Scientology were not tax deductible because of the pay-to-play structure of the Scientology Bridge to Total Freedom. And when the IRS granted Scientology tax exemption for the second time in 1993, it was in direct contravention of um, standing uh, of, of, of a you know still valid Supreme Court decision. And um, if when Scientology's tax exempt status eventually gets revisited, I feel like this factor will be one of the things that gets taken up. Just my personal opinion. Okay, Jen Mint says, I've been watching you since day one. So glad you turned on memberships. I don't always agree with you on everything, but I have so much love and respect for you. Glad you are here using your voice. Well, thank you, Jen Mint. I greatly appreciate it. Um, and uh, glad to have you here as well. Uh, P. Kathleen Nutson says, I'm a new member. Yay, so happy to hear of the new foundation. Well, thank you. Uh, for your uh, your comment, and thank you for becoming a new member, and um, and I hope you uh, find the value in doing so, which it looks like uh, you have and you are. So uh, thank you for joining us in here. Oh, Bigsy, nineteen seventy nine. We haven't seen your dog in a while. How is he? Maybe he stole your pearls. Goliath is doing great. You know, when when Goliath goes to the groomer, and they cut his hair, and they cut it really short and he no longer looks like Goliath, my first thought is, oh, nobody would even recognize him. What's the point of bringing him on camera? So I can only bring him on when he's big, fluffy, poofy Goliath. And uh, he is fluffy and poofy right now. Although, and then he goes and he rolls around and he gets wet and then he gets a lot poofy again. Then he has to go to the groomer and get the 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 blow dry and the everything. So when he's maximum poofy, the next time he's max poofiness, I will bring him on. Okay, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Nat Cat 180 says, comment, Aaron, you and the board of the new foundation should do a live intro and Q&A and fundraiser. Also, I updated and sent you and Fluffer Squirrel UK, my list of SPTV creators by location. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, the dream is once everything's done, it's not a dream, it's just a goal. Uh, once, uh, you know, we've got basically 10 board members, all of whom you will recognize from the SPTV creator space. And um, we use the platform and the reach to be able to raise the funds needed. I mean, you have to understand, by the time uh, I was voted off of the Aftermath Foundation, we had about $235,000 in the bank. Um, most of that was raised through, uh, you guys. And, um, and that was with, you know, one channel doing most of, uh, the reach, most of the fundraising. Um, but as SPTV gets bigger and as the SPTV audience grows, um, the ability to raise funds from all over the world, uh, also grows. And the more funds can be raised, not only can we focus on helping people who are leaving Scientology. We can focus on also providing more and expanded help to people who have already left Scientology and are still struggling in the many and various ways that people can struggle when they have grown up in a cult. So someone leaving Scientology today is getting a certain level of help that someone who left 10 years ago didn't get. But just because that person left 10 years ago doesn't mean they're all good and everything's great necessarily. That person may need a particular, uh, you know, particular kinds of help. Um, and, and, and so, yes. So like having more money doesn't necessarily equal more people leaving Scientology, but it does equal being able to expand the type of help that is offered and who that help is offered to. 
So that's what we're really looking forward to. And, 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 and YouTube is what makes that possible. So thank you guys. Just stay tuned. I mean, so, so much more to come. It's just, God, just, uh, things are happening so slowly, but it, it, it's going to start picking up, speeding up. Okay. Let's see. Carla Forbes says, comment, I work with developing new nonprofits. Don't forget that it could take up to three months for GuideStar Canada to update, to use any fundraising platforms like Google, Facebook, et cetera. Um, I really don't think we need GuideStar to update in order to, um, get approved for YouTube. Um, we'll see. Thank you, though. Thank you for the insight, Carla. I appreciate it. Hey, Carrie Ann says, what is the best way to get the algorithm to support you? I'm close to my subscriber number, but I still need watch hours. It's hard when the Portland org isn't really providing excitement. Um, I mean, it's not the algorithm that supports you. I mean, okay, of course, the algorithm uh, does play a factor. I would recommend creating a bunch of YouTube shorts from whatever content that you do have. There's websites that can help you with that, or you can just, you know, figure, uh, learn how to edit it them yourself. That is something that can help you. Uh, th there's only one way to get watch hours, and that's to keep putting up content. There's just no other way around it. It's one of the reasons why uploading every day or multiple times a day, especially for a brand new channel, is just simply speaking that like the the brute force method of reaching your watch hour quota. The algorithm is not just gonna do that for you. You just gotta get the stuff up there. Um, do, uh, do Q and A live streams, even if it's not about Scientology. Um, uh, it's, the, it's the only way, it's the only way to get there. Uh, thank you for the question. Ka hey, Carrie Ann. Okay, let's see. Melody Head. Hi from East Grinstead, A.A. Run. You'd never know the headquarters of Scientology in the UK exists here. People are always surprised when I mention it. I'm a never in, thankfully. Yeah, it's funny. Like being a good little Scientology staff member growing up, it was easy to think that like, like East Grinstead, Sussex must, must be like a major and important hub of life in the United Kingdom since that was like L. Ron Hubbard's home and the continental headquarters of Scientology. It must be a really big deal. And it turns out not only is it not a big deal, but Scientology is not even a big deal in East Grinstead. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe the people in East Grinstead all know about Scientology, but people outside of East Grinstead don't necessarily know that the UK headquarters of Scientology is in East Grinstead. Uh, yeah, it just speaks to like the, the general, small, tiny, uh, non-influential nature of Scientology in the real world. Thank you for the comment, Melody Head. <clears throat> this is really happening. Says, hey, hey, I've been watching you since 30,000 subscribers. It's been a wild ride recently. Seems different in a good way. Love you, dude. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, and I agree. I think all the recent developments, um, however uh, rocky and rough, have been for the better and uh, to infinity and beyond. I think things are going to be pretty awesome moving forward. Okay, let's see. Big Z, 1979. Have you noticed an uptick in the number of under-the-radar Scientologists contacting you since the increase in SPTV channels, hoping those uh, contemplating leaving are inspired by you all? You know, I, I don't want to say that I've specifically noticed an uptick because uh, an uptick for me means um, uh, an acceler, not like, it doesn't mean going from one to two. It means going one from two to three to 10. And there's always new under the radar people popping up. And it's just like Scientology is, you know, they talk about dealing with the law of large numbers. When you talk about Scientology, you're dealing with the law of small numbers. <laughs> there's just not that many Scientologists in the world. And half of the ones that Scientology thinks are Scientologists are already under the radar and have been secretly in touch with people for years and years and years. And it's just like you're already dealing with such a relatively small population. The people who are there after the last 20 years of like unprecedented information exposure are tend to be the most embedded ones that are going to be the hardest to get out. And like I said, half of those are already secretly out anyway. So it's not really something I would expect to truly accelerate. I just expect it to continue at, at a steady pace. That's how I think about it. Thank you for the question, Big Z. Okay, let's see here. Um, what is this? 
Let me take a peek at it carefully. Okay, let's see. Bo Beats, question, if you dare. Why won't anyone in the SPTV community talk about or entertain any questions or concerns about Virginia and Mike McClawfrey? Seriously, is this just more gatekeeping? Well, if an entire community is not interested in platforming, like an entire community of people who have already shown you that they do not shy away from going their own path. You know, it's not, it's not like some leader. I know Mike Rinder wants you all to believe that any criticism of Mike Rinder is because I'm like the Pied Piper ringleader of everyone. I think everyone's smart enough to understand. Like, I, I would like to ask Mike Rinder, Mike, what do you think is so special about me that you think of like I am controlling all former Scientologists who are critical of you? Like, what do you think gives me that power? I, I don't even get it. So my point is, if people aren't talking about Virginia and Mike McClawfrey, it's not, I don't even know these guys. I don't know anything about them. I, 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 I don't know them at all. All I know is that people who have been shit stirrers in the former Scientology community love to point to Virginia and Mike McClawfrey as a source of shit stirring and Jerry Armstrong. Guys, uh, I, here's my here's my response. Why does anyone need to provide Virginia and Mike a platform if they've got something great to say? Why can't they start their own YouTube channel and say their own shit? Like, I don't know, wh like, why? What, what? And so when we talk about gatekeeping, guys, YouTube is the opposite of gatekeeping. That's why I try to get everyone to start a YouTube channel. Jerry Armstrong and Virginia and Mike McLaughrey do not need anyone's permission to say anything they've ever wanted to say to the entire world. Um, there's a reason why people aren't interested in spending a lot of time talking to these guys. And I don't even want to repeat the reasons because then it'll be, it'll be like, oh, I'm running them down. Guys, I, I don't, I, I, I'm guys, like I'm, I'm not talking, you know, I know it's not everyone that's asking this question. And Bobby, I, I don't even mean to give you a hard time. I feel like you're, I feel like you've possibly been led astray by the uh, Alonzos of the world who want you to think that there's some grand conspiracy for why uh, people don't just invite the McLaughrey's and Jerry Armstrong on their channels all the time. Do your own, they can do their own channels. <laughs> you guys can determine for yourselves if you believe most of what they have to say. Like, if you have to go, what percentage of what they're saying is legit and what percentage of what they're saying is not legit? Um, I, I like to talk to people where like, I don't think anything that they're saying is not legit. <laughs> I mean, it, it, you're always gonna have something where someone has an opinion and someone can have a differing opinion, but I'm talking about like straight, if I think someone deals at all in outright inaccuracies, uh, I, I don't want anything to do with them. Uh, Barb, you're hitting stuff. Barb, you're bringing stuff up. Um, and anyway, I've again, like, I don't have, I don't even have strong opinions about the McLaughreys. I just go, people like to run around like bashing people over the head with the McLaughreys. Oh, why, why won't you do something for the McLaughreys? Why won't you talk about the McLaughreys? I, I, I don't know. I, I, anyway. I don't know. I didn't do a very, very good job answering that question, but that's that's what I've got for now. I mean, I'm I'm I mean, no offense, Bo Beats. I'm just that's just my answer. Okay. Um, it's me, Jane. It's me, Jane. <laughs> I still haven't tried. Oh, Calmag. <laughs> I still haven't tried the Calmage. I do believe you meant to say Calmag, calcium and magnesium. You know, you can buy CalMag on like the the the, the um, health at health stores. Your almost every health store will sell some version of CalMag, and, and those vitamin companies. I've always wondered if all the Natural Vitality was a Scientologist created vitamin company that put out CalMag, and I've always wondered if did Scientology really create CalMag? Did Elvin Hubbard really create CalMag? I've never actually known. But um, you can try CalMag. Like if I'm getting muscle cramps, I'll have like the commercial equivalent of. CalMag or whatever. Scientology version of CalMag tastes like garbage. The stuff that you can just buy from a, a nutrition store in powdered form actually tastes pretty good. Uh, thank you for that. Okay. Miss Kim says, I need a better gimbal. I'm told that the DGI, I'm told the DJI, but the magnetic phone clamp bothers me. Easy to fall off. 
do you know a better one? Uh, it's not that easy to fall off. If someone smacks your gimbal hard enough to knock that magnetic phone clamp off, chances are they're smacking your gimbal hard enough to knock it out of your hands usually. Um, I The reason I'm going to say no, I don't know of a better one is because the DJI one with the magnetic phone clamp is really great. So I even if there's another one, I would be hard-pressed to call it better. So I would still recommend going with the DJI, Miss Kim. Thank you very, very much. Dastardly Saboteur. Aaron, when people refer to the pack base, is that a specific building? Nope. The pack base is all of the Scientology organizations collectively that are located on L. Ron Hubbard Way. That includes LA Org, it includes ASHO, it includes AOLA, and it includes the CLOSUS. Those four entities are the PAC base. Um, excellent question, Dastardly Saboteur. Thank you very much. D. Marie says, I don't know who runs internal affairs, but seriously, they had one job. <laughs> there you go. Okay, Denise Brown says, I live out of state, but I called one of the precincts in LA and I told them that the world is watching them and their corruption in real time. And they hung up on me. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Thank you, Denise. Susie in Paradise says, would that John Ol would that John Oliver take on Scientology? John Oliver has taken on Scientology. <laughs> um, yeah, someone should do a compilation of all the Scientology stuff that John Oliver has done. Uh, he has a running gag on his show of where, of the where's, you know, joking about the where's Shelley thing. And, um, you know, I think there was a time he was actually going to do a dedicated show on Scientology and instead it became a dedicated show on cults instead of Scientology. I really wish that it, he would have just done the Scientology show, but yeah, John Shaliver takes shots at Scientology whenever he can. That's for sure. Okay, Lydia Von Stretchclaw. Question, would you consider doing a recap on how some of the people you originally interviewed back in the day are doing now? Absolutely. Sounds like a great idea. Be fun to even do uh, uh, take the people I've already interviewed on YouTube and interview them uh, in person. That would be a lot of fun. Oh, SPIT Clearwater says, I believe that Streets has discussed that LAPD oversight is a commission made up of mostly retired cops and prevents any true accountability. The corruption runs deep, unfortunately. That makes sense. Thank you very much for that. Um, oh, Susan Miller, AKA Flea Board Warrior. Dress up as Danny Masterson tomorrow. After all, it is his birthday too. That is a really good idea. <laughs> um, Jennifer Fisher. I think some new merch is in order for your new space. I need more options for shirts. All I wear is SPTV merch now. Well, you see, I've got a new space, but I haven't, um, there's nothing like merch inspired. There's no like, there's nothing particularly new merch inspiring about the new space, but um, we'll see. I'll try to get some more stuff up there. Popsicle people call Kelly Copter for editing help. That's actually a really, really good idea. That's a great idea. Thank you for that. Um, okay, guys, I am scrolling down just because I think we're going to wrap it up here. Um, Karen McCourt, every time I see a Balance of Nature commercial, I yell at my TV. Yeah, um, Balance of Nature is definitely a Scientology-related company. Uh, their ads run absolutely everywhere. And um, uh, yeah. Now, to be clear, Scientology doesn't own Balance of Nature, but Balance of Nature has one of these Scientology business consulting course rooms in, uh, in house, and all of their staff are required to take these uh, Scientology training courses. Now, I used to work for a company like, uh, I used to work for a physical therapy company that had uh, 17 clinics, 10 in the Vail Valley, of Colorado, five in uh, Greenville, South Carolina, and two in Spartanburg. And their clinic managers, clinic managers were required to be trained on this sort of L. Ron Hubbard business consulting material as well. And that's what they hired me for was to help train those guys on that. And it would be inaccurate to call that company a Scientology company or even a Scientology affiliated company. Um, but I'll tell you what that company didn't do. They didn't open up their own course room where everyone had to go and sit down and study L. Ron Hubbard. Instead, they just hired me 
to sit down and do little one-on-one -on -one sort of coaching sessions on how the clinic managers should do you know, this little weekly exercise or that little weekly exercise. And it definitely made it feel less Scientology related, which is something the owners of the company were very much concerned about. Balance of nature very much seems to be a Scientology related business, even though it would not surprise me if the owners would take issue with that characterization. Um, all right, guys, we've been going for an hour and 15. Um, it looks like I, uh, the La Poubelle hearing must be going on by now. So let's wrap this one up. Thank you, everyone, for participating. I will make it available for, for everyone on the replay. Um, thanks to everyone who watches until the very end, guys. Talk to you soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see a, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe right here. Bye!